Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you all. And also with you. Ah, thank you. It is good to be together in Jesus' house. Jesus is here. Jesus lives in you and in me. Jesus is alive here in his house. Jesus brings his gifts and his presence and his power to you and to me today. May the Lord give you an experience of his presence with you right now. As you hear his word, as you experience the music and the praise that's coming from our hymns, as you pray to him and as you pray in his name, may the Lord give you an experience of his presence that you may know his love for you, his power for you, and his grace and mercy upon you. Let's worship our God together this morning. Uh, we sing together, well, we do something with these hymns together. Please meditate on these words. Speak them from your heart. Uh, and I think we get some extra music this morning. Thank you, guys. Let's worship. this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That our eyes and our ears may be opened to receive the mystery of God's love. Let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God, confessing our sin and the need for forgiveness and his gift of life. At the Lord's own invitation and command, I confess all my sins to God, the very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended him and hurt my neighbor. I come now in the sincere hope and faith of the forgiveness of God made known to the whole world in the mystery of his Son, Jesus Christ who sacrificed his own flesh and blood for me, remove my sin and guilt for his sake, and restore a right spirit within me. Amen. 
upon this your confession, I, as a call, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ Jesus and of his word, announce the grace of God unto each of you. And in the stand and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. We sing together. Meditate on these words together. that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We hear God's word. The Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of my judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, Thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. 
Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for this day from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you, are, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, who shall come to you, the new Israel. Amen. Our text today is from the Gospel reading, where we have this greeting from Gabriel to Mary. Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. This is our text. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends in Christ, can you imagine receiving a greeting like that? Those were the first words to come from the angel's mouth when he appeared to Mary. Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. He went on to try to calm her fears and explain further the reason for his appearing to her. And he said, you will conceive in your womb the Son of the Most High. He will be great and will rule over his kingdom forever. That didn't help very much. She said, how will this be? I don't understand. What would you think if a being from another world appeared to you and told you that you would have a king growing within you? That the Son of God would be inside of you? Would you believe it? Would you have your doubts? Of course you would. And that's what happened with Mary, too, in today's Gospel reading. She heard this incredible message from a frightening being from heaven, and she had her doubts. Fear at the appearance of a, such a heavenly being, bright, shining with heaven's glory, huge and fearsome, the size of the angel carvings in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, the voice of the angels that Isaiah said, saw in chapter 6 of his prophecy shook the very foundations of the heavens. So perhaps this angel's voice was rather overwhelming too. Everything about this appearing would have made Mary be afraid. But whatever the reason for her fear was, Mary was greatly troubled by what she heard and by what she saw. After further explanations from the angel, it wasn't much better. She still had questions. How can this be, she said. I'm, I'm a virgin. The words of our text are the answer that Mary got. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And then a little later on in the speech, for nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. There's great power there in that message. There's God's power there in that message. And this was enough for Mary. She folded her hands and graciously submitted to the will of her heavenly Father. She said, I am the Lord's servant. His will be done. Let your word be the way it will be for me, because I trust my God. And that's the moment of conception. From this moment on, the Christ child would be growing in her womb. The virgin conceives and will bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And how does this happen? It is the power of the word. That's what Luther taught. She heard the proclaimed word of life and salvation from the angel, and the proclaimed word of God entered her womb. The Holy Spirit came upon her. The Holy Spirit works through means, through the word, the saving gospel. It is proclaimed by the angel and the Holy Spirit works within Mary the salvation of the world. As the word becomes flesh. And the power of the Most High overshadows Mary. And Mary conceives within her body the Word made flesh. 
And there in that short description that the angel gives is the gospel's first indication of the Trinity. Gabriel tells Mary and all of us that the whole of the Godhead is involved. Each person of the Trinity is engaged in this fulfillment of Yahweh's great promise of salvation to his people. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. There's the Father. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. There's the Holy Spirit, obviously. And the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. There is the second person of the Trinity, the Son. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit engaged in the salvation of the world that God brought to you and to me through that word made flesh in Mary's womb. Here is God's favor showing itself in Mary. Here is God's gift of grace. The same overshadowing power of God that brought the Israelites out of Egypt is conceived within the womb of a human mother. The same overshadowing power that filled the temple with God's Shekinah glory now fills the virgin's womb. God's power to save, God's power to forgive, God's power to open heaven to all believers, God's power at work in the conception of a baby. Put yourself in Mary's place. Now, I don't mean as the mother of Jesus, but as the one to whom the angel Gabriel can say to you too, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. That is so true for you and for me and for each person that believes in Jesus. We are, each one of us, favored ones. Not because we have merited the favored status with God in any way, but because we have had our sins forgiven, washed away in the blood of Christ, in the water of our baptism, because we have received grace upon grace, as John tells us in the beginning of his gospel lesson. John makes the statement as he describes Jesus' incarnation and what that means for each believing heart. We have God's favor by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves is a gift from God. We are his beloved. We are his possession, his children, dearly loved by our Father, dearly loved by the Son, dearly loved by the Spirit. What a wonderful blessing it is to hear what Gabriel says next. Not only are we favored ones, but the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you. You and I need to hear that good news today more than ever. Isolated from one another so often, kept apart from our family and our loved ones, we need to hear that we are not alone. And in the words from Gabriel to Mary, you and I hear that companionship, that fellowship that we have with our God. The Lord is with you. The great I am says, I am with you. The last words Jesus spoke before his ascension where I am with you always to the very end of the age. Paul begins and ends most of his epistles with the same thoughts. The Lord is with you with his gifts of grace and peace. You know, we often take that liturgical interchange for granted. You know, the pastor says, the Lord be with you, and you all respond. And also with you. Yeah. It almost rolls off our tongues without a thought. But those words shared between pastor and congregation hold profound meaning. They affirm the truth of what the angel said to Mary. 
that the Lord is most certainly with us here in his house, with us wherever his name is spoken, with us where two or three are gathered in his name, with us virtually online, with us here in his house, with us wherever we are. There is fellowship with our God. But that shared liturgical interchange also affirms that fellowship with one another. It affirms the unity of the body of Christ, which we are individually members of and together members of. I say, the Lord be with you, and you respond, and also with you, joins us together in that fellowship of faith that we share. The importance of that affirmation of our true fellowship with one another through our faith in Jesus is shown by the points in the divine service when we do that, when we say those words. We often speak them right at the beginning as we did this morning or at the beginning of a Bible study or at the beginning of a church meeting. At those times, we are affirming the source of our unity that we are the people of God together, our ability to come together as God's family, brothers and sisters in Christ, that the source being the very name of Jesus, that all-powerful name that can change the very atmosphere of a gathering, making it a sacred place where God himself is present. The Lord is with you and also with but during the divine service, we speak that interchange at the beginning of the service of the word and at the beginning of the service of the sacrament. In both of those places in our liturgy, we're affirming our unity in Jesus' name. We are affirming our fellowship with one another, with Christ Jesus as our head. We are also affirming that everything spoken, whether by pastor or congregation, whether in prayer or in proclamation, is spoken by all and affirmed by all of us to be a true statement of our faith in Jesus that we have together. The Lord be with you and also with you. And all of this is testified to by the name given to the Messiah in Isaiah's prophecy. And we sang it over and over again in our sermon hymn. Rejoice, because Emmanuel will come to you, true Israel. He is Emmanuel, God with us. For Mary, the presence of Emmanuel was physically apparent. She held the incarnate Son of God in her womb and in her arms after his birth. For us, the Lord's presence is assuredly among us in his word proclaimed and in the real presence of his body and blood shared at this altar. This is testified to by our confession of faith. We also, take, and it's also taken as true by faith that the Lord's presence is there in our hearts where Jesus said that he and the Father will make his home that he is with us with his power and strength, his grace and mercy, his compassion and love in every moment of our lives. The Lord be with you and also with you. I've spoken with so many people over the years in ministry who live in doubt and despair because they don't experience Jesus' presence. They have a problem that never gets resolved. They have an, a chronic pain that never gets healed. They live with depression that never seems to lighten. Or they tell me that they don't feel forgiven. Or they don't feel loved. Or they don't feel connected to the body of Christ. Well, since Mary was a human being like you and me, it is safe to say that when the angel left her, she probably had her moments of doubt and anxiety and fear. 
And we can hear a bit of that in her words to the 12 year old Jesus when they finally found him in the temple in Jerusalem after searching for him for days. And we can hear some of that in her coming to where Jesus was teaching in his ministry, coming with some of her other adult sons to bring him home because she thought he had gone over the edge. But at least twice, once when the shepherds left the Bethlehem stable, and once when they left Jerusalem after they found Jesus in the temple, when in that 12-year-old experience, Luke tells us that Mary treasured up these things in her heart. She could go back to these treasures whenever doubts arose in her mind, when fears threatened to overwhelm her, Go back to her heart where her Savior dwelt, back to the word, back to the assurance that Gabriel gave her that she had found favor with God and that the Lord was with her and is with her. You have those same treasures, those same assurances from God's word. When doubts arise for you, when fear threatens to overwhelm you, When you don't feel forgiven or loved by God or connected to him, at those times and in any time, go to his word that you have treasured up in your heart and in your mind. Let him speak to you again and again his promises of life, of grace, of love. Go to your baptism where you have his promise that you are saved and forgiven where you have been claimed as his own beloved child. Go to the manger. Go to the cross. Go to the empty tomb. Those are the places where you have treasured up in your heart God's promise that he is with you in his forgiveness, in his salvation, in his gift of eternal life. And there, Meet your Lord, the incarnate Son of God, the all-atoning sacrifice, the risen and reigning King of kings and Lord of lords. There encounter once again Emmanuel, the Lord who is with you. And pray with me this beautiful words of this hymn. O holy child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels. Their great glad tidings tell. So come to us. Abide with us. Our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Please rise and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Are there any special prayer requests this morning? What? My daughter was baptized this morning. Your, your granddaughter is being baptized this morning. Oh, praise God. What a wonderful thing. And I know her name, but I can't remember. Winfrey. 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 Yes. Thank you. And for Thanksgiving for Dennis. For Dennis. Dennis. Oh, praise God. Yes. 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 Yeah. And you were telling me about him. Yes. Great. Yes. For my mother, Darrell, I'm suffering with the uh, skin site latest. Wow. And it's very, very healing to me. Oh, you betcha. You betcha. Yes. God for that too, yes. And for your care for her too. Thanks be to God. Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation and birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve, through the continued witness of the holy prophets, apostles, and evangelists, and finally through your living voice through the ministers of your church to this day. Grant that your living word ever call us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Keep all you have called to preach and teach and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one and give them health and joy in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit over the whole world that those who lead in the authority of government acknowledge your laws and will making for times of peace, that we may live faithfully in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In light of that prayer, we pray, O oh Lord, for all those who are suffering through this pandemic. We pray for all those in the UK that are panicking and, and experiencing this new strain of the coronavirus. And we pray that you would keep that at bay so that it doesn't spread anew across the world. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you bring an end to this pandemic, that all would know health and strength, that all would be drawn to you for their source of healing, that all would know peace because you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your holy word and sacrament, Strengthen us to obedient living. Send your grace, mercy, peace, and love to surround our families. Inspire those of various vocations in the world. Comfort, defend, and heal all those in times of illness and distress. We give you thanks and praise for the successful surgery for our brother and our sister who went through, for our brother who went through heart surgery and for our sister who had hear her um, cataract removed. And we pray, O oh Lord, for your continued comfort and peace. We pray for our sister who's suffering from cellulitis, that you would bring her healing and comfort, and especially bring her peace. For these and for all others that we bring before you, we come, O oh Lord, asking for your comfort, peace, blessing, healing, and love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. By the mystery of your Son's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, establish us in the one true faith, and strengthen us in lives obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We celebrate, O oh Lord, with Glenn and Leslie and their family, the baptism today of their granddaughter, granddaughter uh, Winfrey. And we ask, O oh Lord, for you to 
Fill her with your spirit. Create according to your promise, saving faith in her heart. Wash away her sins through the water of baptism and bring her into that precious fellowship with you and that precious fellowship in the body of Christ with all of us who are believers in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from our evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Close with singing joy to the world in preparation and anticipation of our celebration of Jesus' birth this coming week. Thursday night at 7, Friday morning at 10, and we look forward to being with you. God bless you this week. Uh, unless you hear different unless things change with some changes in restrictions coming up this week. Um, that's the plan. We're going to go for it this, this week as much as possible. Okay? Let's sing Joy. <laughs> Thanks be to God.